Welcome back to the Move Consciousness Podcast. This episode, we're talking about two very different but often complementary plant medicines, ayahuasca and San Pedro. Six guests share what it was like to participate in either a 7-day or 12-day retreat at Gaia Sagrada. We discuss their intentions going into this journey, their experiences with each medicine, and how they felt by the end of the retreat. If you've ever wondered what it's like to do ayahuasca in South America, this episode might be for you. Don't forget to check out the episode page at moveconsciousness.com slash Gaia Sagrada. That's moveconsciousness.com slash G-A-I-A-S-A-G-R-A-D-A. All right, let's get started. All right, so why don't we go ahead and why don't you start by introducing yourself, tell us a little bit about your experience with Ayahuasca San Pedro, how you got interested in them, and how you ended up here. Hey, this is uh, Tariq, a.k.a. Daddy Longlegs. Um, I, I was here for the 12-day retreat, and I've never done Ayahuasca before. How did I find this place? I found it because I was watching, I was in college, I think I was a freshman. Trump had just won the election, actually, and I was on YouTube. I was watching this channel called Spirit Science. Shout out uh, my boy John. And he was talking about, yeah, I went to this place, guys. I got it. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, the stuff that he was talking about, it was basically like, I was getting into some stuff. Like, I was getting into like lucid dreaming at the time. And like, the stuff that he said that he experienced while on ayahuasca was the kind of stuff that I wanted to get out of my lucid dreaming, but I haven't been able to. So, yeah, I came here looking for uh, direction and answers. And, uh, you know, I, it was an experience. I didn't get exactly what I wanted. Actually, I didn't get anything that I wanted, but I did get something. So, you know what I mean? I'm here and I mean, that's the... My name's Matt. I have not done ayahuasca before. I come from a long, a lot of trauma, a lot of addiction. So I decided to come to Ecuador to sort of... I've always heard about ayahuasca and always heard about power that it, that it can to heal. So I decided to come to Ecuador to do, to do ayahuasca. Um, my name's Jack. I heard about ayahuasca probably about three years ago, but it was pretty scary for me. Um, thinking about it, I was like, oh no, that's some crazy drug stuff. I, I don't want to try it. Um, and then about a year and a half ago or two years, I met a friend who went to this exact place. And it was the type of person that I didn't think would actually do this type of stuff. So I was like, hmm, maybe this is actually something that seems more, I guess, legit. And then I did a lot more research and I really started believing in a lot in it and really, yeah, wanting to do it. And I felt the calling. Um, San Pedro, I didn't hear about at all before this. Um, it was just kind of like a bonus thing on this trip and I didn't really do much research. Yeah, but I've done psychedelics before. I've done shrooms a couple of times. But yeah, never ayahuasca or San Pedro. And now, you, now you've done it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Hey, my name is Hana, and I'm from Seattle, Washington in the United States. I originally heard about ayahuasca maybe three, four years ago through a friend, and I was very intrigued by their experience, so I just started doing my own research, and the opportunity came for me to try it uh, this past October. And so I did a bunch of research on different countries, different uh, centers to try ayahuasca. And I used ayaadvisors.com online to kind of help me find different retreat centers and look at all the reviews. And Gaia Sagrada stood out the most just for a combination of different factors of um, location, uh, safety, affordability, and the good experiences on the Aya Advisor uh, website. And safety was really a huge concern for me, and that was one of the themes that kept coming up for people in the reviews and how safe they felt Gaia Sagrada was. And since this was going to be my first experience with ayahuasca and San Pedro, I really needed a place to feel safe to go through this experience. Yeah, isn't it nice to not have to worry about malaria and like yellow fever and some of those other things? <laughs> yes, the fact, and because it was such a last minute booking, it was nice that I didn't have to worry about any of the environmental issues or getting extra vaccinations um, prior to coming here. 
And having Wi-Fi, I think, was a big thing, too. Like, you can actually still stay in touch with people back home. Yes, You're that just, was... Like, in some remote part of the jungle. <laughs> that was really, really nice. I didn't need to have Wi-Fi all the time, but it was nice to be able to check in for my flight online, um, make sure, especially with everything um, that I have to worry about with traveling, with COVID restrictions and all that, that I could stay up to date on what I needed to get done prior to going back to the States afterwards. I really wanted an authentic traditional ceremony that respected the indigenous traditions. Yeah, and these shamans are from the Shuar tradition too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, my name is Ramon, and I had never done any ayahuasca or San Pedro or any other psychedelics before I had come here. The reason I had decided to show up was because uh, in my life I had actually been through a whole lot, you know, a lot of bullying, a lot of child abuse, definitely lost some members of my family that I hadn't come to terms with. And I didn't realize I was walking around with so much weight until my older brother about, I want to say three, four months ago, decided to send me this link. And it was to uh, Guy Sagrada here in uh, Ecuador. So it, it wasn't like I just clicked the website and just went and booked everything. It just sort of started my career curiosity about the entire subject. So I'm going from every every article I can find, every Reddit post I could find. I, I look inside the, you know, all the discussions on the forums about going into the U.S. so that this way I could see if maybe there was a cheaper alternative so I didn't have to go all the way across to uh, South America. But it was a wonderful excuse to come here. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that it was, it was, I had found out a whole lot about it. Uh, there was a, a lot of uh, mystery uh, surrounding it too. So I was very intrigued, you know, when something's mysterious, you want to know more about it. So I decided to, you know, just take the plunge. I didn't realize it wasn't ever going to be a good time to take a 12 day retreat somewhere, right. you know, but the winter was coming up around the corner and I just decided, Hey, you know, uh, life is short and I have, I, I'm, I just turned 30 in August 30th and I'm just, I'm just sort of tired of carrying everything that I did. So uh, I finally went, I booked everything, I came all the way over here, and I have to say it's uh, it's been one of the most moving experiences of my life. Uh, things like coming to terms with my father's death back in 2016, I actually saw him, we hugged, we talked, everything was wonderful, uh, and after he was done hugging me, you know, during my experience, he kind of stood in front of me, and I was wondering why he was, so I said, hey dad, aren't you going to go somewhere? He said, Ray, I'm always with you, which... I, I was really touched by that. I was not going to get that kind of closure anywhere else, you know, because unfortunately, you know, him and I, we had a, a bit of a falling out and I didn't talk to him for a year and then he passed away. So, you know, pairing that for the past five years has been pretty rough on top of everything that's happened with the pandemic. And it's been, you know, a lot of uh, adjusting social circles, a, a lot of re even now I'm reevaluating where I live because uh, I'm from New York and I, I moved to Dallas, Texas. But I may not be living there in a few months. So I just sort of like coming to Cuenca, Ecuador, to Guy Sagrada was to sort of get clarity, not just on, you know, dropping all emotional baggage, but just sort of to see where I would go next. And the answer that I found here, I don't believe I would have found anywhere else. There isn't a therapist in the world that was going to sit there and talk to me for 20 years at a time just to figure myself out. And this is one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. It seemed like a pretty efficient form of therapy for you. Oh, most certainly. You years worth of, worth of therapy in like a night. Absolutely. I, I've had therapy ever since I was a kid and I just sort of, sort of stopped it in my adulthood because I started seeing the stereotype come to life where not everybody that's a therapist or a psychologist is actually qualified to help you. Right. So I just sort of, I went through, I saw many people's experiences. I watched the videos on the Dia Sagrada website. Some of them were a few years old, but it was just, hey, just to see where these people were. And it just seemed like a good experience for anybody involved. I told some family members, they, 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 they sort of took it the wrong way a little bit, but you know, this is my life. I can't really worry about what other people think of me. And you know, since I've come here, I've gotten answers to so many things. And if anybody in my, in my family were to do it, I would highly suggest it. And it's definitely a, a bit of a small crucible for you to go through, but you know, what would you do to get rid of anything that's holding you back in your life? And that's why I'm very happy to have come here. Great. Why don't we go ahead and start? Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Jude. I have done ayahuasca before. I've done uh, four ceremonies before coming here. Those ceremonies were all back in the States, and they were either two day or three day ceremonies. So I feel like you're not able to fully integrate everything you learn in those two or three nights. So I wanted to come down here to uh, stay for a little bit longer time and properly capture the whole 
experience of the ceremonies as well as everything else you learn outside of the ceremonies. And I think it's been wonderful because they give you a day off after each ceremony, which really helps with the integration and with processing everything you learn that night. You usually need it because you're exhausted. <laughs> yes, and it also is very nice to get some sleep. The ceremonies themselves have been amazing. The music, the shamans, everything has been 100% traditional, and you really feel like you are doing something that people have handed down for centuries, exactly how they meant it to be. And more than that, the best part about coming here is just the friends you make and the connections and everything you learn outside of the ceremonies, not even from the medicines, from the ayahuasca and San Pedro, but just the little things you learn from all the people here. That's been the most powerful part. Yeah, there's tons of amazing stuff going on here. Um, something else that I thought really stood out is, well, maybe we should talk about a little bit what the ceremonies are like in greater detail. And then after that, I'd like to talk about what the sharing's like afterwards in, in the whole group. Do one of you want to start with maybe what your experience was like? Just give a little walkthrough of what it's like to participate. Let's start with ayahuasca. All right. Well, I, I guess I could give a little bit of insight. Uh, well, uh, as a, someone who had never uh, done ayahuasca, when I, I showed up, uh, they, they had a, a maloca, which is uh, some sort of a, a gazebo-like place where in case it would rain, we'd still have cover. You know, it, there's a lot of uh, mattresses and blankets kind of surrounding everything in a circle. So you're there. Uh, then you see uh, the Ecuadorian natives that are here. So they're all showing up. They have uh, all their little, little props, you know, uh, all the all the sage, all the extra tobacco, the, the things that they use throughout the ceremony. So that's very nice. They even have a little spot basically where we put things to get blessed. Kind of like an altar. An altar, an altar yes. Yeah. That's all, it, It's a basically a spiritual altar where, you know, if you want something to get blessed by the shaman, you would put that there. So you have everybody putting like, you know, their crucifixes and, you know, other like sacred items that they felt very important to them. Uh, and then uh, they actually build a fire in the middle of this thing because there's a there's a, with a bit of stone that's built in the middle of this um, loka. Right, and that's another altar too. So that's the altar of the half moon, I believe. So that's part of that. Right. Yeah. And so there's a, there's a lot of firewood nearby. So they'll put the fire there and they'll start building it up. And so you're in this gazebo like area. There's a fire in the middle. You have blankets. You're really cozy. And then they start uh, continuing with the ceremony. Uh, one thing I found very unique is that they actually have us uh, snort liquid tobacco as part of the uh, as part of a way to open your mind to you know, basically be more alert and I, I think it works it's definitely uh, you know it's a little w weird I'll admit to to I put yourself on that one before either yeah that's a new one yeah definitely uh, it's, you know because like you, you think of snorting anything you're thinking like hard drugs or whatever you never thought in your life you'd snort liquid tobacco but yes this yeah. stuff definitely clears out your sinuses I, I like their explanation for how tobacco is used in ceremony as a sacred plant and how it is a messenger that can send information between the physical and the non-physical. So that's why in the beginning, before the medicine is even taken or anything, there's a lot of tobacco. Shaman uses this, the cigar and blesses the space with the tobacco smoke. And then when everyone got the little handful of tobacco to put into the fire with their intention, that was another part of it. And then there's a liquid tobacco as well. So there's plenty of tobacco before you even got to the ayahuasca part. Right. The way I see it, there has to be a method to the madness because every ayahuasca experience that I've had has been just so eye-opening and very magical. So... You know, I, I'm very glad to have done it. Uh, then the uh, once everything uh, is all set up, you know, it starts getting darker because we start like in the evening, like, you know, as the sun is going down, you see the fire, you see how it illuminates everything. You know, everyone eventually gets to the part where they take ayahuasca and they're sitting there waiting. There's like buckets behind all the the, the mattresses for everyone to purge because if, as, if it's ayahuasca, it's definitely going to happen. You will be making uh, several trips to the bathroom and a few of them, you will definitely need help. I know I had help, especially from you, Stephen. <laughs> it was, uh, I mean, thank you so much for that. No problem. Uh, but um, it, yes, it, it, it's at first, you know, you go through the bathroom experience, you get, you get to puke out, you know, maybe sneak some water through the faucet in the bathroom, like as I'm sure many people did. And then, you know, I'm, I, once I get back to lay down, that's when like things start happening. Like for me, uh, it was like, well, it was like, uh, I want to say the spirit of the ayahuasca 
Oscar T. It started to kick in. This voice is it's, it's there was a voice in my head. It's not like my imagination. It's not like I'm thinking it. It's a very kind of like unique personality that you know isn't your own. Personality, exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and you, you're just basically getting like for me, it was like a, a slideshow of everything I had gone through in life. And so anytime you go through a conflict, there's your side, there's their side, and the truth. And uh, Mother Gaia is extreme, like an expert at giving you the truth. And the truth sometimes it She's hurts. like a no bullshitter. Exactly. Yeah. She, she just points out, okay, well, they did this, but you did this. And so the more that you're going through your, your life, you're, all the way as a child, you're, you're seeing, like, I, I saw images of my own inner child crying and me holding my inner child as if it was my own kid. You know, that this is a very unique experience uh, overall. Uh, there's many songs that are sung by the shamans. They're very good at the guitar. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of rusty with my Spanish, you know, because I am the, uh, Dominican, Hispanic. But uh, even some of my own Spanish started coming up through these ceremonies because this stuff is like digging through like the archives of it's your hard mind. It's not to let it just like flow through you and wake some stuff up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Just, just the music is so mu- moving. It's very powerful. You, you know, you get enveloped into to it. And then at some point in the ceremony, you're not just suffering anymore. You, it's it's almost like you accept like one of the biggest lessons that I have received was like you know life is suffering, life is pain. But it, somehow when I accepted that negativity, when I accepted that you know okay, well this is the truth. This is just the way that it was. I got this power with inside me. I started like sitting up. I started enjoying the ceremony. Once I got over that hump of oh this is a little painful, I'm I'm learning so much about myself and I'm just enjoying this over and over again and you don't even realize that time is going because these ceremonies go on for sometimes 12 14 hours so they'll start at five and by the time you're out of there eating food clean up in the bathroom you finally turn your phone on and it's 4 a.m and you're over here like wow. how long did it feel like to you for me if i had to be honest if it, like for me it's like let's say if we started at five it felt like we should have been done by like one two in the morning that's how late it felt yeah. and then you actually look at your phone and it's like wow it's actually later than that yeah you know there are a couple of things that you mentioned that you touched on i want to go back to one you were saying you're drinking water from the faucet so one thing that the way that this is done is you don't drink any water during the ceremony until the very very end of the ceremony which is usually around like what four or five o'clock in the morning, something like that. Four right. Five. Ish. I yeah. would say uh, it, it was I would like my last ceremony. That's why I was doing the first ceremony. I did everything via procedure, and even and I found that even though I was like you know in the sense cheating here and there, these lessons, these revelations, they're still hitting you. You know, the water is like it, it's a temporary fix because you'll drink the water, but you still have your pain and you still have this entity in your mind telling you everything you've done wrong and everything that you need to fix. It's like it's a very rough teacher, but it. It's a very specialized teacher because normally you'd have to get to know a therapist. You'd have to talk for months, even years, just for them to know exactly how to tell you. You go through one ayahuasca ceremony and you're immediately hearing an entity in your mind you've never heard before who seems to know everything about you before you even know that they're a thing. And it, it's so unique. And I'm, I'm honestly a better person for have gone through that. I don't think there was any way to, you know, other than reading my mind, I don't think it's possible without these type of ceremonies to really unpack in the way that I have. Yeah. How much time would you say you spent really clarifying and focusing on what your intention was for these ceremonies and this trip and these journeys. Uh, well, uh, well, well, my intent, my my whole like you know reason for coming was just to basically you know clear up anything mental that I needed help with. You know, I would say that like I was I, I came there to just basically redo everything, come back with a new mindset, a new, you know, a, a, a direction, you know, a better compass as to where to go in life. So I'm just, uh, you know, again, uh, very happy to have done it. But if I mean, like every ceremony, I also feel is different, not just in the experiences, but I also feel like you want to go there with a different purpose and intent every time. And I think it's very good for, for me. What I do is I may not always know the reason up until the ceremony is going to happen, but I just assume whatever is one of the very one or two things that come to my mind, the 
quickest, like of those two things or one thing, I'll pick that and I'll just be like, okay, this is what I want to focus on. I want to focus on what I need to let go. I want to focus on what I would like to do next in life. I'd like to focus on, you know, just what do I need to change about myself as a person to even find true love? I would say that when I had asked uh, Mother Gaia that uh, this past Saturday, because I had decided to do an extra ceremony. And to me, that was the most profound experience I'd ever had. I, I, it takes I, a lot to be willing to go back again because it is so much work. So it takes a lot mentally to prepare and be like, okay, we're going to go through all this again. Right. It definitely is because you realize, you know, you're coming all the way from the United States, from the UK, from wherever you're from. So you come here and, you know, you don't have to do the ceremony, but you realize it already took a lot for you, the book, to take it in the, and set everything up and, you know, tell your friends and your family or wherever else you let in. And so at some point you realize this might be painful, but this could be one of the only times ever, you know, to even find the answers to this because anything can happen in your life. You know, you might have a family, maybe your job gets very busy. If not now, when, right? Exactly. So, yeah, you'd mentioned like it was very different even for you from the first time to the second ceremony and each time is different, but it's also so different person to person. There was such a wide range of things that happened. Um, Hannah, do you want to share a little bit about maybe what you observed just to, as far as what the ceremony procedures were like, and then whatever you want to share about what your, your, your journey was like. Okay. Um, so I guess, um, ceremony structure wise, I felt like in my research, it kind of varied depending on the country, just a little bit, um, depending on um, the indigenous ceremony that um, it was respecting. So um, I had a rough idea of, of the structure, but didn't really have a full grasp of exactly what to expect until I actually just went through and experienced it. I received forewarning that um, maybe I should take a nap prior to the ceremony, that it would be long. I think in my head, for some reason, I thought it was going to be like eh, three, four hours. <laughs> it was like more closer to 12 hours. Um, you know, I think for my first ceremony, for me, the lasting effects of ayahuasca was more like 16 hours. Um, but uh, yeah, so the structure was something that I wasn't familiar with. And um, I found out during the ceremony. So the time, that was one thing that I was really caught off guard by. I'm really glad I took a nap prior to that first ceremony because, you know, I had just flown in and hadn't gotten too much rest. I was a little bit jet lagged. So I really needed that nap if I was going to be uh, up the whole night. And the ceremony starts at 5 p.m. In, in the evening, or here it did. And it it went all night and so there was a good no pro tip. take a nap if you can yeah ceremony. take a nap <laughs> um and uh you know i think i set my intentions um prior to coming to ecuador um i think we all kind of have some rough idea of why we are called to this place and um but i didn't really so i was mulling over it for 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 weeks prior to coming here. And then it didn't really hone in until I um, set some intentions by myself here. Once I got here, I felt the land, I felt the energy, and I could kind of, you know, have a little bit more clarity as what I would like to focus on during the ceremony. So um, usually I would like meditate or have some journaling time an hour before the ceremony or so, just to kind of focus myself and focus my energy and my intentions. Yeah, so once the ceremony started, um, I was also not, <laughs> I was unaware of all the, the traditions, the prayers, you know, the songs, the tobacco involved, all of those little steps that really contributed to the main event of ayahuasca prior. So I thought originally, <laughs> you get in there, maybe you do a quick prayer, a song, and then and take the ayahuasca drink and that was it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a lot of um, the whole time the shamans are rounding the space, creating a space for everyone to open their minds, their bodies, their souls up to ayahuasca. And um, in that, that takes time. And so I was unaware how much time it would take. And it, it certainly, I don't even know how long it took exactly because we, I didn't have a watch or anything, but it did feel like at least an hour or so. Um, by the time they set up the fire and everything, I felt like that took like 30, 45 minutes in the mm. beginning. So there was a lot of 
preparation prior to actually receiving the medicine of ayahuasca. Right. And we talked about the li- the liquid tobacco, but what we didn't talk about yet was rape. So have either have any well you've probably done rape before, mm-hmm. Jude. Yeah. Uh-huh. But have either of you done rape before? Uh not before no. the ceremony. Um, do you want to try and describe what that's like? Yeah. So I did rape um during one of the ceremonies when I really needed extra help to um to ground during the ayahuasca um, portion because it was it was very very um, challenging for me and basically <laughs> I'll try to remember what I can remember because it was I was a little out of it but they basically uh, blow into your nostril the rape plant medicine and you um, hold your breath you keep your mouth open and um, it. It, they just blow it into your nose and you kind of just have it come out of your mouth. And it, I don't know, because maybe I was a little bit out of it, but it burned my nostrils, the inside of my nose, quite a bit. Um, and you're not supposed to breathe it in. So I think I accidentally breathed it in because I was so shocked by what was going on that it did burn my throat a little bit, but it's not supposed to. <laughs> yeah. it, it's supposed, I mean, some people really enjoyed it. They, they enjoyed the experience. I think it feels like a brain freeze, but it's hot. Like, it, just, yeah. like, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel great. Some people love it. In that, yeah. That strange, but it's yeah. not Yeah, it, it, Because it was my first time, I didn't have anything prior to compare it to. So my brain, when it first happened, I didn't know if I liked it or not. It just felt different. Um, but when I did breathe it in, it felt really uncomfortable for my throat. And that's when I knew, okay, not to breathe in anymore because yeah. it, it would hurt. Hey, there's different ways. Some people have you like breathe in and hold it. Some people have you, uh, this particular one, you open your mouth, but you don't breathe. And right. Then they blow it into your nose. and then that's mm-hmm. It. Mm-hmm. Let's see. I think those were the only things about structure. It was like the time that I was not really aware of prior to coming here. And, um, what surpri- that's what also surprised me. And I was actually surprised that I could s- do it for such a long time um, without feeling like I was going to fall asleep. But um, so time and then throughout the uh, whole ceremony, there's lots of um, prayer and um, uh, song um, by the shamans. And they kind of really guide the process of um, the ayahuasca journey. And there are multiple opportunities to take more ayahuasca. I only took, um, for my first uh, ceremony, I took two cups. And then for my second ceremony, I took one cup. Um, And it's spaced out enough so you have time to decide if you want another cup or a third cup. And think structure wise that those are like the things that kind of stuck out for me and then my experience for my first uh, ceremony was by far the most intense out of the two ceremonies I've had so far the first cup the first round of ayahuasca I took was a very pleasant journey Um, it was almost like a meet and greet with mama Aya and she was very kind and sweet and gentle and fun and then by the time I took the second second cup uh we were like on first name basis and had known each other for 20 years so she could tell me to my face everything that she wanted me to hear directly so I came with a background of sexual trauma and a lot of repressed emotions that I had tried I attempted to heal through therapy 20 no maybe I think was it 20 years ago no, the event occurred like 20 years ago. And then I tried, I couldn't, I couldn't take therapy, and, but the triggers were getting really bad. So I eventually went and saw a therapist and she helped me put everything into a box while I finished therapy, but I never ended up finishing my course of therapy. So I had all of these repressed memories and emotions in this box. And I learned to put all other emotions that were more negatively oriented, I guess, into this box. So I had a lot of building up into this box in my in my mind and um I I had been feeling very very held back by something that I couldn't understand for a long time and so I just couldn't take it anymore and um that's what really pushed me to come to Gaia Sagrada when I did. I think you bring up a really good point too that a lot of people experience is you've been working on some one area of your life and you've been trying a lot of different things but you haven't been able to achieve the the relief or the end result that you've been trying to right yes so that's why it's like this isn't usually 
Ayahuasca usually isn't the first thing you try. Yeah, you know, it's not readily available, at right. least in the United States. Not it's not covered by insurance. It's not, it's not, easy it's not talked States. about. It's very taboo to even talk about. Um, so I think it becomes a last resort, which unfortunately I, I, I find that now, knowing so much about it, how sad it is because so many people push all of these hardcore pharmaceutical meds into their body and yeah. all the toxic damage it does to your organs and they have and those no, are legal drugs and those are legal and, ayahuasca and they is have considered a schedule one drug. yes so it's the same as methamphetamine it's the same as heroin, yeah it's the same as crack and all that it's mind-boggling to me and i've come here and had 12 hours with this plant medicine and i have released all of the trauma and the rep repressed memories i've held in for for 20 years um, things that I couldn't tell my family about. They don't know why I'm here exactly. They just think that I'm doing something hippy dippy. They think I'm, you know, all spiritual and out trying to find myself. So they have no idea why I'm, I'm here in Ecuador in the middle of COVID. But, um, I, it came to a point where I just couldn't take it anymore. And, um, the old tricks that the therapist taught me weren't working. It wasn't enough. And something needed to be released from deep within. And so um, that happened during that second cup of ayahuasca. And aside from the traumatic situation, the hardest next thing I think I've ever had to go through um, because it was reliving the trauma all over again and and uh, Mother Ayahuasca kind of pushing me to let it go. And until I was ready to let it go, I had, I feel like, at least six hours of what felt like mental anguish and physical manifestation of that torturous mental anguish. Um, I felt nauseous the whole entire time. I couldn't, I couldn't relieve the nausea. I was, I didn't have anything else to purge. And so I was just dry heaving. Um, and the pain in my, in my belly was terrible. I lost all control of, um, just my body. I couldn't move, um, my body. Um, oh, yeah, I remember I was there for part of that. Yes. Yeah, I had like to be, noodle. yes. <laughs> as people had to carry me back to, um, back to the Maloka, um, to the hut. And, um, I, I felt I needed to go to the bathroom to relieve and purge through every orifice. <laughs> and, um, even then I couldn't control that. And then even from the bathroom, I couldn't, I was so exhausted from the purging that I couldn't move. I was so tired that I um, slumped over onto the bathroom floor and rested there for like two hours. I've definitely felt that way before. We were just so exhausted from trying to purge and get everything out. Yes. I just wanted to like, go to sleep. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, so it was a lot. It was a lot for that until, and even when the ceremony finished, um, I was still feeling the effects of the medicine long after everyone had left the hut. I, I slept in the maloka, which is totally fine. The blankets were so warm and I was so comfortable, but my nausea and my, um, the, the desire to purge didn't stop until 7.45 in the morning wow. when I opened my eyes and someone said, oh, breakfast is in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't want to think about food right now. I just so, it, yeah, it was, um, it was long. It was long, but it took me that, it took me that long to finally let go. I just, I guess it was lodged in me so deep that I didn't, it, I just got so used to holding on to it that it felt weird to let go and to not feel that kind of darkness inside that I had become almost companions with over the last 20 years. So in a, um, single, night. That's pretty in a single night in 12 hours. And I think the, when the shamans, they would sing, it was, it's so beautiful. But at that first night, I couldn't appreciate the ceremony that much because I was so deep in the medicine, in pain and trying to figure out what I was, I could, because I couldn't even recognize what I was purging for. I knew that it was pain, it was toxic, and it was coming out. I think at one point I saw tar come out of my mouth. It, tar? Yeah, it, it was like, like a black, black viscous, like, yeah. yes, it looked like tar. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just had a lot of stuff going on that I couldn't really appreciate the ceremony as much. Um, and I noticed that the shamans, they guide you through the whole ceremony so beautifully because as they started singing, i that's when like I would start to purge. That's when I would start to release. Oh, yeah, that's not a coincidence. It's like about 30, 40 minutes after you take the medicine, they really start 
having some heavy drums and yes. that vibration, like it makes you more nauseous and make it like stimulates the purpose. Yes. I mean, we are 70% water in our body. So it, it catches something inside of you and, and clings to that. And it, it doesn't, at least for me, it didn't stop until it all came out. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. So both you and Ray said you came in with these intentions and you're, you both were able to have some pretty profound stuff. I, I think what we should talk about in this group too, is what happens when you don't get any of the stuff you want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you want to? <laughs> I guess that's me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess I was a little worried about doing doing the podcast because, like, well, I don't really have anything to share. But then, no, someone, this is an important. Yeah. Someone yeah. told me so that. No. That's, say your name too. My name's Jack. Okay. So yeah, I've I've been struggling with depression for like 15 years. The last four years have been super super hard, and I've tried so many things like therapy, meditation, reading, whatever, like lots and lots of things. And this was basically my last, almost my last straw. Obviously, I'm gonna keep going, but. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that I've I've dealt with in my childhood conditioning, trauma, lots of it's just a laundry list, so I can't really sum it up. This was kind of like I was really desperate to do this, and I really believed in it. Um, and I came here, and sure, I had expectations. It's kind of hard not to when you invest a lot of money and time and wait for over a year and a half to do it. I was interested in doing it, and then COVID happened, and then I was just waiting for the date that it would reopen, wow. <laughs> basically. Anticipation. Yeah. Yeah. So when I got here, I did the first ceremony. Um, part of me felt like I wasn't going to change at all. Um, and then part of me also thought I was going to be a completely different person just because of all the stories that I heard online. Did the first ceremony completely sober. The only thing that happened was I was pretty much nauseous the entire time and I, I, I vomited, I purged. And I was like, well, that kind of sucks. And then I listened to everybody's stories and that was really hard to hear because everybody was having like these amazing visions and revelations and all that stuff. You found yourself getting like jealous every time you heard the yes. story. Like, yeah. God damn it, why yeah. didn't that happen to me? Which, I, yeah, I was very jealous, but then I also was very happy for people because I was like, well, that would really suck if everybody did not have anything. You know, it's, it's it's very painful to like see other people's pain and like not not get healing from it. So I'm very thankful that other people are getting healing from it. But it was it was very hard for that, and I, I and felt that particular jealous. ceremony. You weren't the only person. There's one other no. person too that yeah. shared that she was also frustrated. Yes. And- there was more than one, which I later found out. It was like that night. It was just everybody around me talking about their stories, and then I, the next day, I started finding out like, oh, okay, that I'm not the only one, and that felt a little bit better. And yeah, so then the San Pedro ceremony. I didn't really have any expectations for that one, just because I didn't know much about it, and I didn't really think it was gonna fix anything. Uh, so I just like went along with it. I I got high. It was enjoyable, but no, not really any breakthroughs. The next ayahuasca. Oh, I did the sweat lodge, which I don't know if you guys explained it. Yeah, we haven't even talked about sweat lodge yet. <laughs> yeah, the absolute worst experience <laughs> of my life. Um, Great way to start describing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Why, why don't you describe it, the sweat lodge? Like, describe it. So it's supposed to be kind of like a rebirth. You're in there. And they do four cycles of putting hot rocks in there and they warm up the little tiny KV type thing. It's called the womb. Um, And they do four rounds of that and it gets... So the womb is, it's not tall at all. You have to be... Yeah, you have to be sitting. Sitting. Which that was the hardest part. And there was how many people crammed in there? Like... 35, at least 38, possibly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I saw the coals that they were putting in there. They were like the size of a volleyball. Yeah, they were pretty big. massive. Which honestly, I thought it was going to be a lot hotter because I've been in uh, saunas that have burned my burn to breathe and it was nothing near that so the heat wasn't that bad um the beginning part was uncomfortable about like sitting there and you your back was hurting and you had to you had no space and you couldn't move and they told you no you can't lay down you can't do this you can't blah 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 um but it wasn't that bad but then the medication hit the third round and it was absolutely horrible physically like I felt so it was San Pedro San Pedro San Pedro yeah yeah one two three yeah sorry for the structure that's no, okay. First round was San Pedro, second round was San Pedro, third round was ayahuasca, then San Pedro, and the fourth round was food and water. Um, so yeah, uh, third round in the middle of that, physical symptoms hit. I uh, can't describe everything I felt. It was just the worst feeling of my life. I felt like I was going to die. had lightheadedness, um, nausea. Uh, I vomited. Um, and then after that, I felt like vomiting again, but they were doing prayers, so I didn't feel like disrupting them to get another bucket. Um I, I, yeah, I felt like I was going to die and I was waiting for this to be over. Um, and then the, the symptoms lasted like eight hours after we got out of the womb as well. 
horrible. <laughs> and I, I, I stuck in there the entire time. I didn't go to the restroom break. Cause that's kind of what the intention was is you don't get out of there at all. You kind of just sit, sit in the womb. Um, and I tried to push myself and I, I really wanted to get out, but I was like, no, I'm going to stick through this. Cause I'm a regret. You're not one doing. of a handful of people that were able to do that. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I was happy because I survived that and I, you know, I pushed myself and I was a survivor. Uh, but yeah, that was a horrible experience. And basically from then I just felt like this entire retreat has been torture. Um, the next ayahuasca retreat, uh, I decided to take seven cups because I was, I guess, desperate <laughs> to make fearless. something happen. Yeah. Oh, disgusting. <laughs> um, and that, uh, the next day I was nauseous. How would you describe what ayahuasca tastes like? Oh, I don't, I don't, the very first cup I took on the first ceremony wasn't that bad. Like I took, I drank it slowly mm-hmm. and it just kind of tasted muddy water. Um, but the ones after that kind of felt like alcohol. I, I hate drinking shots and alcohol. Like I, I struggle to drink those. So maybe it's because of that. It doesn't taste like alcohol, but it just, it has that same like yuck fa- factor yeah, that I just can't taste kind of like if you were to take, if you were to like rake your yard with twigs and leaves and stuff and boil into a tea, that's what it tastes yeah, like. Yeah, sure. I, I, yeah. I Earthy think, and dirty. I can agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it, it has kind of a, it's really bitter, right? Yeah. 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 And then you have an aftertaste for a very long time. I heard uh, San Pedro tastes worse. I can't tell. Yeah. I, I just hate both of them. No, no. Which, it, which, which it, do you think tastes worse? Ayahuasca definitely tastes worse. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, ayahuasca, yeah. As yeah, soon as I drink I think ayahuasca. ayahuasca. I but they both taste like, um, if good. you take like Chinese herbal medicine. That's what I think they taste they, like. That's too. what yeah. they taste like. They so taste so like I grew up on that. So yeah. I, I was able to take the shot and I didn't feel weird from it. But I mean, that's because I'm just used to taking this nasty, bitter medicine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, for me, the ayahuasca tastes like a sort of bitter Guinness. I don't know. Oh. That's like... But never heard... But yeah, because it's dark and a little thicker sometimes. Yeah. That's how I kind of see it, but it, the purging sensation is so strong. Like, the nausea was so strong the last time I did it that every time I now, that when I even smell it or drink like drink it, it's sort of like that nausea. Oof. Like, yeah, same. Um, like for I, me, like, when I took the first cup, fine, no problem. Didn't even take a piece of an apple. Yeah, I didn't either. Like, the I'm first fine, time I, I didn't. Mm-hmm. But then when you have the nausea in your stomach already and you go back for the next cup... Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that apple now. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so you took seven cups. Yeah, I took seven cups, which Three was, th- I think, the most I anyone took this entire retreat. Yeah, <laughs> um, I was close. I took six, <laughs> but uh, I was gonna do six, but then I decided seven's a nice number. Yeah. Anyways, um, so uh, <laughs> I did that, and the entire time. I, well, I threw up at least four times, four times. Um, and I was nauseous pretty much most of the time. I had more physical symptoms like, uh, tinglies and lightheadedness. Um, but nothing again, nothing else, nothing in my head, whatever. Um, so it was pretty upsetting, but I mean, I went into that kind of expecting nothing's going to happen again. I was trying to have, like, I was doing the advice of everybody. Don't have expectations, meditate, um, have different intentions the way you say your intentions. And I, I, each ceremony, I keep revising it based on people's suggestions. And I tried really hard. I meditated. I didn't think about anything and it didn't work. Second ceremony I did the next day. And I just was so done with drinking that stuff that I just took one. And then I basically fell asleep because uh, I was so sleep deprived. Um, That's the one that you were like too down for me, right? You were just like crashed the whole night. Yeah, Yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I was kind of, I was at the end of my patience. Um, and I also thought, well, you know, I, maybe something can happen. Uh, but yeah, nothing happened that night either. I just slept and I didn't even have any crazy dreams or anything like that. What did you do to like not be in a shitty mood all day? Like after all of these, because you didn't get what you wanted out of it. Um, I don't know if I, I can say that I wasn't in a shitty mood. <laughs> I mean, there were some times that I was, I guess, happy or whatever, but I, I cried a lot, like, you know, that night uh, after the first one, and then during the sharing meetings, it was really hard to, like, not cry. Yeah. Um, let's, let's talk about the sharing meetings a little bit. Can you describe what it's like? Yeah, sure. So the meet, sharing meetings are, we all get, um, the whole group from who did ayahuasca the night before, the day after, we all get together and basically talk about our experiences, what we saw, what we felt, what we got out of the, the ayahuasca ceremony. But these shares got really deep and they, like, everyone I thought was very vulnerable on them. So what do you think allowed you guys to do that? Because your first ceremony, like, everyone's a stranger. Yeah. So what allowed you guys to open up so much? I think just bonding through the ceremony and then also the family meetings too is a good way to get close with people and, you know, to, to feel each other's pain or to feel each other's story. 
I think after the ceremonies, they're so intense and long and somewhat painful that we, after the ceremonies, everybody bonds. And then you can speak about um, your experiences, you know, freely, openly. Yeah. I think it also helps when people start crying, <laughs> honestly. Like uh, the first meeting, a, a man cried. And that's, you know, when a man cries, it's, it's I don't know, it makes you feel more like, oh, I can be vulnerable too. And yeah. people I feel get like more. Lots of men cry here. Yeah, they yeah, do, sure which is, it's, it's refreshing. Um, but yeah, when you see other people opening up and being vulnerable, then you say, like, oh, maybe I'm allowed to have vulnerable moments. And, yeah, I you know, know Ray, when you were doing your show, you were extremely vulnerable and sharing about how your dad passed away and the guilt and everything and you just like put it all out there for everyone well i, I did because it, it was just like at first i was just meeting everyone then uh you, you know I, as matthew was saying you know you go through one experience and everyone goes through a multitude of feelings and addressing traumas and getting told maybe truths they don't want to know and then you start bringing it back to the meetings and it's just so many people there and then you realize you know what you're not the only one with problems you're not the only one who's been through things and I can easily say, even with everything that I've been through, there are several people in the retreat that went through infinitely worse things than I had ever been through. So when you hear everybody else just like pour out their feelings, you know, because they're holding this in, they they know it's their turn. There's even a, a, a point where of uh, uh, the head of the retreat, Christine, she may not always be there, so they're passing around a little mic or recorder so like so we could speak into so that she could hear it later. And so we we have all this anticipation once it's our turn and we hear everybody else. So we've heard what everyone's going through. And the more that people keep going down the line over and over, explaining their stories, explaining what they had gone through, it just kind of, it lets people know, hey, you know what? Like, I may not have met these people, but they just went through something so riveting and so life-changing that I think if I shared it, you know, perhaps I my part of the story is going to help somebody else. It's letting somebody else, hey, you're not alone. We're all here. We all took the plunge. We all took a huge chance, took a leap of faith, came all the way to Ecuador, so this was the time to unload all of those things. And I spoke very freely to 30, nearly 40 people, and I didn't get an ounce of judgment. Everyone heard me. Like, even when I opened up about, like, suicidal tendencies and, you know, wishing that maybe things had ended, just even to say that, it allowed somebody else who had the same feelings to open up right after me and yeah. say the exact same things. And so, like, and I think those meetings, especially after the ceremony, that's what starts making us become more of a unit. That's when it feels like, wow, where have you guys been my whole life? I have a bunch of these new friends. We're all in the group chat together. And I really do believe it's because we have the time to not just go through our own trials and tribulations, but we come together and we share it as one. And so in a way, we're all becoming stronger through each other's stories. And that's why I love the family meetings after the ceremonies. Yeah, I feel like... The first few people, maybe the first like five to seven, trying to, you know, keep things going, keep it brief, doing a succinct share. And then it just like the floodgates open up and then all the stories get like exponentially longer and it really just pours their heart out. No, most certainly. Like like there there there's people who, you know, they were happy. And then like we even had a few people who were unhappy and like indirectly kind of blaming others for maybe like, oh, maybe they made too much noise through the ceremony or whatever. And then it's like you could feel like if we were all strangers we wouldn't care but then the person would kind of walk out and the next thing you know like the person they knew that they were getting spoken about and you know they're kind of like getting emotional and then there are other people who they start chiming in and so there were so there were times where it not only got intense but it got a bit dramatic because you can see everybody indirectly like they know what's going on and it's like nah you know I just met this person but I respect their pain I respect their story and I'm just not going to let somebody sit there and point fingers or whatever and even as like uh, you, you know like not everybody stayed in like you know the village more. Like some people, they were they weren't very happy, and those particular people, they would go through another ceremony, and so like everybody's changing, everybody's processing, and it's like it went from just a group of people at a retreat to now we're a big family. Now it's like you know what your pain is my pain. Somebody's talking about you. I'm gonna step up. I'm gonna defend you. I'm gonna let others know. Hey, you know what they might think one thing, but this is what I think. You know, yeah. there, there some was, people even stand up and start sounding like a motivational speaker, and they're in their chair. <laughs> What, what, was, what was the nickname? Daddy Longlegs? Yeah, man. Yeah. I just threw that in there, man, but they call me the prince around here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it was the king, and then you demoted yourself, I believe. It was prince, and then he got promoted to uh, king, and then he demoted himself okay. to prince. Because most young kings, when they receive the crown, get their heads chopped off. Yeah, you know <laughs> I mean? You just want to keep your head on. Yeah. That's good. 
yeah. yeah, I thought that that was important. Uh, maybe not the motivational piece, but just to, you know what I mean? Because like how Ray was talking about, you know what I mean? Like we kind of became a family or whatever. But even before that, you know what I mean? Like we all came here with uh, intentions to be better. So like, you know what I mean? Just trying to keep the energy focused on that because it's, it's real easy to be negative. It's real easy to like fall into the same traps that we was into before we got here. So, you know what I mean? That was... I mean, that's my whole thing with the standing up and speaking peace. Yeah. Nat, why don't you talk a little bit about which experience, uh, ayahuasca or San Pedro, you had the most therapeutic experience with, maybe compare and contrast what the two different medicines were like for you. Sure. For me, the most, the best um, ceremony that I had was probably the sweat lodge. Um, oh, this, this is the opposite. <laughs> yeah. the worst thing ever. This is your favorite. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed like the darkness of it, the heat of it. Um, I felt really powerful in there, actually. It seemed like after that, you really started to open up too. Yeah, yeah. Like I feel like a lot of toxins even got out of my body from just yeah. sweating, and like just the whole the whole process was really really incredible for me. The ceremony of it, I thought it was really really incredible. And then yesterday, also the walkabout was really a really great ceremony too. I, yesterday, I felt like um, I felt the San Pedro spirit for the first time, like oh, truly, yeah. truly for the first time. Yeah. Oh, well, it's awesome. Yeah, because they say San Pedro is like the grandfather, and Ayahuasca is the grandmother. So right. they're supposed to be good compliments. I definitely felt like a warm, like a warm sort of like mushroom feeling. Like um, it felt like different than similar to mushrooms, but a little different, a little more, a little speedier maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But it's so, so with the San Pedro, so we had the ayahuasca ceremonies were all pretty much the same structure. With the San Pedro, there was a regular San Pedro one that was in the same area that the ayahuasca ceremony was. Right. There was the sweat lodge, which was mostly San Pedro, but a little bit of ayahuasca at the end. Right. And then there was the walk that you're talking about, what they call the walk of power. Walk of power. And yeah. that was more like you're going from, you're, you're going on basically a long hike and bouncing from different locations. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, just being in nature also yesterday was really, I think, helped a lot with the San Pedro. This space is pretty damn beautiful. <laughs> yeah. On a mountain in Ecuador. Yeah. On like 55 acres. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really, I really, really felt it yesterday. Ayahuasca for me is more personal, I guess. More of a, you know, you get, it's more of a sickness. You're, you're feeling it in your body, the nausea, the, the, the purging. So it's more difficult. Like the last ayahuasca se- uh, ceremony I had, it was just the whole time my stomach was like in like, crazy knots. It felt like somebody was just like churning my stomach and I was just incredibly nauseous and you know mentally I was very um, unstable but the next day I felt like it was it definitely was healing my body and I felt my body better you know like more in tune with my body so I think that was one of the more beneficial ceremonies I had. The first one I did I had more visuals and more um, I guess more fun you could say but maybe wasn't as beneficial as the one where I was um, sort of it goes going through my body and sort of taking all the toxins out. But yeah, they say, I guess the ayahuasca, the ayahuasca shows you what you need to fix and then uh, the San Pedro teaches you how to fix it, I guess. Yeah, it gives you the power to do the change or make the change. Right, so right. Yeah. yeah. So I do you feel like that was accurate? I definitely think so. Yeah. For me, I also had a, like, I have a little bit of a problem here, like with like, I think I'm very, like much of an empath. So like being like just taking the medicine with, with a group of people, I think I get caught in other people's stories and pain a lot yeah. and I'll like confuse myself with their pain maybe. But yesterday I sort of felt like I was getting better at that. Like I felt like I would, I would feel, cause the first, the first one it was like, Oh, like this pain's coming. I don't know what it's from. You know, I don't know what this is. But yesterday I felt, it was like clear, like, okay, like when people were, you know, when she would put people in the mat in front of her, like, and they would tell their story, like I would feel like they're like pain, like big time event, but it was like, okay, that's their pain, you know, just be there for them, it's not you. you know? You're a supporting character, but you don't have to feel it firsthand. Right, yeah. right. Versus exactly. ayahuasca, sometimes it connects you where you're like, you're sick and someone else is sick. We had guys who were, they were all experiencing labor pains together, like they were right. having childbirth. The synchronicities, right. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They split us all up. Yeah. In the middle. Oh yeah, you were one of the ones yeah. that was giving birth too, huh? They split because yeah. we, the, it, we kept bouncing off of each other, and so... They finally, um, one, I don't know which shaman had decided to, but they split us up into different um, areas of the Maloka. Yeah. And the other thing is, it, yeah, it was a, too much of a concentration of that energy in one area, but also the fires used ceremonially to help cleanse these energies and mm-hmm. help purify. So it, it's easier if you guys are split up, I think. Yeah. 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 And at, after they split us up, like at least for me, I stopped feeling the intensity that 
yeah. the two girls next yeah, to Yeah, because the night before, it, I think energetically on all the team, I think it just like wiped them out because it was a lot. Yes. A lot yes. was happening in that area at once. So the second night, I think, like, screw this. <laughs> yes. we're sp- after like the first few minutes, like, screw this. We're splitting these girls. Yeah, up. yeah. And yeah. I think that was the wisest yeah. decision. Because it did, to it make. worked fairly quick. It as was. As you guys were split up, you guys were good. Yeah. There was a calmness that surrounded me that I did not experience at all prior to that. Um, you know, you're just sharing a lot of the pain that's circling through there. But yeah, no, that was that was intense to feel everybody's pain mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah, I know the the person the second night that was really struggling. She was. I remember when she was like screaming and howling like that. I was purging and I could like feel that energy like coming out mm-hmm. yeah, off of her. Even though she was like away from she us, she was like, like what a hundred feet away, yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think a lot of us felt that when, when we could hear her. Yeah. Yeah, that was. But then nice. also, like, I think energetically we were all supportive because we understood she was going through some stuff and she wanted to work it out. So it's like, we, even though she's a stranger, she's not really. It's like you still want to support them. Right. Yeah. I think a lot of people were um, so great at holding space. Yeah. For when certain people were really going through the depth of that medicine. Yeah, I thought everyone was really kind to each other. Yeah. 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 I think that also helps to be able to be vulnerable in the next day in the family sharing. And stuff. there's so many hugs too, right? This so, place, many. so many <laughs> hugs. Cuddling. Well, yeah, cuddling. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh my God. I was yeah. in heaven. After the sweat lunch, I was cuddling with somebody and it was like exactly what I needed. And the San Pedro makes you very cuddly. Yeah. yeah. I've noticed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. I, will, I will say I was jealous of that girl who was going through a hard time. Like, I really felt for her. I felt mm-hmm. for her pain. But I was like... You're like, damn I, it, I want to get all that out. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was prepared to go through hell. And yeah. I, I wanted to feel the pain because I felt You're so tough much... tough as hell because you were, I mean, you were ready to do anything on this yeah. trip, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I've already gone through a whole bunch of pain that yeah. I just like, you know, I want to go through that boot camp to just be able to get over it. So I was a bit of jealous of her, even though I felt really bad for her as well. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we just go around, do you want to start with you, Jack? And just any kind of like final things that you want to say about your experience or your journey or any of that, or any kind of thing that you want to say to someone who's never done any of this, just whatever you feel that you want to communicate to someone who's, sure. who's listening. Um, well, I really believed in ayahuasca before this, and I hate to be a Debbie Downer or whatever it's called, um, but I, I believe in it less for myself. I believe, I believe it helps a lot of people, um, and I definitely think this is a good route for a lot of people, but you should remember that it's not necessarily going to be a magic pill for everybody. Um, it is a very good tool, uh, and I think it's it's safe. So it's a good try. Just like, just don't expect it to fix everything. Ma- like, especially not everything. Maybe not anything at all. Um, so it just might not be what what helps. And I I didn't feel like I got anything. They say the medicine's still in my body and it's going to be there for a while. But it's really hard to believe that because I I don't feel any better. Uh, I'd say you got some pretty awesome friends out of it. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of great people. And of course, I had great experiences and learned things just as I learned things in life in general. But um, yeah, it's it's hard to still believe in it for myself. But maybe in the future, I'll I'll connect with it again. It's an important perspective. I mean, you tried, you really gave it your all, and it didn't like nothing happened. Yeah. So that can happen. Yeah. Yeah. So two other routes (laughs) and uh, (laughs) strategies. Um. Yeah, you know, healing is a very personal journey. So we all heal in different ways, and um. It was nice, I guess, for me that ayahuasca and San Pedro worked for me. And I think anything that I can mention to someone that hasn't done ayahuasca and is considering it is to, um, I, I really recommend Gaia Sagrada just because it was so safe. I went through a lot of hell that first ceremony and I didn't know anyone. I came as part of the six day retreat, not the 12 day retreat. So I didn't get to bond with anybody from the beginning and I didn't really know anybody's backstories. I didn't know the staff very well. So to kind of be, to kind of have been thrown into a really difficult um, journey right from the get go where I had to rely on people to help me walk or help me blow my nose or help me tell me to remember to breathe (laughs) Um, was a lot for me to be vulnerable and to trust people because I'm not really good at that. And I think that's one of the the lessons I came out of here learning is to be able to be vulnerable. But the the safety, um, how safe I felt through the whole 
journey, no matter how difficult it was, was so left such a profound impact on me. The the shamans, the helpers, um, everyone in the circle holding space is ultimately what kept me grounded and not lost in the medicine so that I could actually finish and complete the journey. So for first time seekers, I feel like this is such an incredibly unique and special place where you can try this medicine and feel safe. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, the ayahuasca in San Pedro has helped me an awful lot. Uh, ayahuasca showed me a lot of different things I wasn't expecting. I learned, I took a lot of lessons away from it. I got closure from, you know, the death of my father, which was the biggest thing that I had gotten from this entire retreat. So I'm eternally grateful. And although I didn't enjoy the sweat lodge nearly as much as other people may have, for me, it was a crucible. It was one of the hardest things I have done in my life. And I didn't even make it through. Ended up spending 45 minutes in the bathroom. So use your imagination on that one. Uh, but I would say that I'm glad to have done this. I, I am better for it. it it's, there was, it's obviously, unfortunately, it is a coin flip. It, it is very moving for many people. But you may be one of a handful of people that did not get the help. However, I think it's still, it's still worth the journey. Because now it's not a question. Now it's not, oh, is this going to work? Or maybe I'll try it out. Like you come here and it, whether it helps you, whether it does, if it does help you, great. You unload a lot of emotional baggage. If it doesn't help you, you walk away with still a positive experience. You meet all these different people. You realize you're definitely not alone. You're probably going to have friends for the rest of your life that in, like went through this experience. So even if you're still struggling emotionally, you will have at least 30 to nearly 40 people that will always be their own speed dial whenever you definitely need them. So so I believe to anybody who is even thinking of trying ayahuasca or San Pedro or any psychedelic, psychedelic at all, Guy Sagrada is an amazing first start. It was I found it very intriguing how on Google and, and over the internet where anybody can have free reign to say anything negative. This is this place has a 5.0 rating, and I did not see one single bad review. And the ones that I did see seemed like it was just shade that wasn't really authentic. So to me, I'm saying like, how is this place getting all this positivity? How is this like, to me, when I'm looking through the internet, it, it's appearing as if it's the major leagues of a, a psychedelic retreat. So this is the first time I had ever done it. I am eternally grateful for coming here, for unpacking everything that I have. I love both of the psychedelics and to anybody who is even thinking of trying it, by the time you're thinking of it, it's a last resort. By the time you're thinking of even taking the leap of faith, you have done so many things on your own personal accord to try to get over your personal traumas that you're kind of running out of things. And now you're trying things that in society is a bit taboo because again, it's next to schedule run drug, which after my experience, it should most certainly not be. And I believe that this could be good for anyone. So if you are interested in trying it, please do. And even if it's a bad experience, you're still going to walk away with something good. So definitely give, consider it. I think everyone should come in with very low expectations and not have any preconceived ideas of what they're going to get because the experience can be so wildly different for everyone. Like Jack, who didn't experience anything as compared to some people who are going through hell. Whereas for me, there was absolutely nothing negative about the experience at all. I purged, yes, but there was no nausea, there was no discomfort, and the rest of the time was just pure peace, pure bliss, and just being present in the moment. And I have no idea why. I have no idea why different people experience such vastly different things, but I do know that there is an intelligence there. And I come from a very scientific background. I'm not a scientist, but I treat everything scientifically and I approach the world scientifically. And I am forced to conclude that there is something here which I don't understand. Because, for example, I was listening to music and every time I would have a shadow of a doubt about anything, a certain song would come on, which would be exactly what I needed to hear at that time. Or the shamans would say something, which would be exactly what I needed to hear at that time. And things like this kept happening throughout the night and even after the ceremony. So 
it really feels like maybe it's my imagination going crazy, but at this point, it doesn't matter. There's something there that's working in mysterious ways, which we currently do not understand. Um, yeah, I'm just so grateful to go through the ceremonies and I've done a lot of psychedelics in my life, different psychedelics. I've always been really interested in them. And I feel like now I'm, this, these experiences have been they're at, they're at the top of the, of the list, you know, like they're like, I feel like they're really, they're really, really special. So I definitely feel like I've gained two allies in Ayahuasca and San Pedro, you know, two allies to help me heal, you know, um, for the rest of my life if I need it, you know. So I'm, I'm grateful. And I'm, ex I'm also, I want to work on getting, uh, you know, helping the legality of Ayahuasca and San Pedro in the state in the United States, because I feel like it, it, can, it can help so many people, you know, work out through these issues. And there's so many, you know, people on, on opiates and cocaine and alcohol, so, so many dr drugs that are just ruining lives. And this definitely gives you perspective. It gives you a sense of, of God. It gives you a sense of nature, of the plants, of, 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 of the the history of the shamans and it's it, it definitely i still feel like i'm processing a lot of the information that i got the downloads and and whatnot from the ceremonies but um, i feel like it's sort of in my subconscious and in my body and i can feel myself you know becoming healthier if i'm going to tell y'all anything i'm gonna, it's just the same thing everybody else said man uh you should definitely have with you the reason why you're coming here don't be confused about why you're here you know what i mean so so you can stay focused because even throughout the ceremonies they ask you to put in your purpose put in your intentions just down the third and uh for the most part most people like stay focused on tracking things but i think it really helps with the experience whether you experience anything or not it helps with your whole journey if you uh come come in with the intent of whatever you're going to do uh with that being said i'm not going to say don't have no expectations but you should expect the best and the worst see what i'm saying you should expect uh for it to not do anything for you and you should also expect for it to do everything that you wanted it to do because either way you're going to be right uh, for real for real that's it my experience was cool fuck ayahuasca i'll, I'll say that on record uh, i'm good i'm never doing that again but san pedro was cool and like I said, I got what I needed to out of it. So, uh, yeah, man, everybody has their own experience. Uh, you just stay you and do what you do, and I'm sure you'll be okay. Yeah, so many different experiences. But you guys are fucking awesome. <laughs> hey, thank you. You guys are brave. I, no one quit. Everyone was just like, let's just let's go for it. A lot of people wanted to. So I wanted to. What? I said a lot of people wanted to. I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, you definitely want to. But, I mean, you guys are tough. You guys did it, so be proud of that. Be proud of some of us for surviving the sweat lodge, even if you didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely stronger than me, that's for sure. You guys all made it. Definitely. So, congratulations. If you enjoyed this conversation, share it with someone who you think will connect with it and help us move consciousness.